Pixel motion blur can be found under the time category, and this effect will generate motion blur artificially. So I have an animated sequence that I did in Cinema 4D and I brought it into After Effects. I rendered this without motion blur and without any information to generate motion blur. So every single frame is completely crisp, even though there is some pretty fast motion throughout the animation. Pixel motion blur will simulate that motion blur artificially. So I'm going to apply it to an adjustment layer on top of my image sequence. And immediately we see motion blur appearing over my entire scene. Now it is very segmented and that's because of the shutter samples property right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at these controls. By default, it's set to five because this will render much more quickly. So you can work with a lower shutter sample rate to get quicker previews. And then once you're ready to render, a value of 16 is what I generally will use. And if that doesn't give me enough detail, then I'll bump that up to maybe even 32. But as I do that, you can see that it takes longer and longer to render because it's having to process and generate more and more samples. But it does a good job of producing fairly natural looking motion blur, especially when you play it back in real time. I'm gonna set this down to six just so it renders more quickly and let's take a look at the other controls. First of all, we have the shutter control which is set to manual, but I could change that to automatic and that actually grays out my shutter angle and shutter samples because it's now looking for the composition settings and I'll need to enable the motion blur on that layer as well as the composition in order for it to show up. So what's driving this now is if I go into my composition settings into the advanced, the shutter angle and samples per frame in here are what will drive that. So this is a way to match up the shutter angle and shutter samples to any other motion blur that's generated in After Effects, things that won't need an effect to generate artificial motion blur. And that'll keep everything in sync, but I don't need that, so I'm just gonna leave it at manual. And now I can change the shutter angle and samples right in the effect. Shutter angle is a way to measure the amount of light being let into a camera every frame. 180 is kind of the standard shutter angle that you'll see for natural looking motion blur, but I could cut that in half down to 90, and then the motion blur will be half or go down to 45 and it'll be even less. This is purely an aesthetic choice. You can choose how much or how little motion blur you have in your scene based on that value. We've already looked at shutter samples. You should just increase that until it's nice and smooth, but no greater than what you need to save on render time. I'll undo that back to six. And then finally we have vector detail. And the word vector comes from motion vectors. What this effect is actually doing under the hood is looking at the frame before and after and tries to find pixels that are similar. So like this Lego stud right here. On this frame, it's going to look back one frame and see how far those pixels traveled. And it's going to look forward one frame and see how far those pixels traveled and then attempt to generate what it thinks the path of that shape took between those frames and then generates in between samples where there was no data before to generate this motion blur. And the higher your vector detail, the more motion vectors are used to calculate the blur. And you might think, well, then I should just crank this up to its max of 100, but that is number one going to take forever to render, especially if I increase my shutter samples. You can see that this is still calculating and it took that long just to do one frame. But the reality is that's not necessarily going to generate better results. If we look down here, you can see that there's a bunch of artifacting showing up because the effect is just not able to distinguish between every single one of these Lego bricks at such a fine level of detail. So if I undo this back to 20, we still do have artifacting, but it's much smoother. And you play this back in real time, it's nowhere near as noticeable. So let me turn my shutter samples up to 16 and play this back so you can see what it looks like in real time. Now I cut out that render time just so you didn't have to sit through it. But if we take a look at this a little bit closer, you can see that at full frame rate in real time, that motion blur actually looks pretty natural. Now, if I paused it, you know, on one of these blurry frames, Yes, you can see some artifacting, but the reality is motion blur is blurry. So it's not going to be very noticeable unless you have very fast moving objects with a fine level of detail. And the great thing about pixel motion blur is that it will work on top of anything. It could be these image sequences from a 3D render, video footage, especially if it's time remapped, anything you throw at it, it will attempt to generate those intermediate frames to create this motion blur. And that's something that CC force motion blur cannot do. So if I apply CC force motion blur and turn off pixel motion blur, you'll notice that I have no motion blur at all. This effect can't generate information where there was none before. 
at least not on top of image sequences or video footage. If it's something After Effects created, like a simulation effect, and it doesn't support motion blur like CC Pixel Poly, CC Force Motion Blur will be able to generate those intermediate frames because all of that data to drive CC Pixel Poly is stored in After Effects, and CC Force Motion Blur is able to access that information. But with an image sequence or a video file that's just made up of a bunch of hard-coded pixel-based frames, it's not able to generate anything between them. So that's why you would want to use Pixel Motion Blur instead. It's a really nice effect to have in your tool set, especially if you're getting into 3D rendering, because baking motion blur into a render could be devastating if you need to make changes because of how much time it adds to your render. So doing it in post in After Effects can be a much safer way of handling your motion blur. But that's everything you need to know about Pixel Motion Blur. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.